back up in the corner. I see him. Okay, folks. Seated behind me is the Upper Elementary Advanced Band. These students have been playing for two, some of them three years. They went all the way through the elementary beginning band program, uh, and they graduated up to the uh, Advanced Band. We're going to perform three pieces for you this evening. The first piece that we're playing is called Huracan. Huracan is a Mayan word uh, referring to a storm uh, that, that is believed to be the root of the word hurricane. Uh, so in this piece, you're going to hear the storm. They're uh, right in the middle, right around measure 38, we get this storm that happens, this back and forth type thing. Uh, we have the wind, um, the wind represented by this uh, melodic pattern in the clarinets and the saxophones that goes through. And then finally, we have the culmination uh, at the end. So this is our storm piece titled Huracan. featured some interesting percussion instruments. We had a vibra slap going on. Do we saw that back there? Caleb, go ahead and hit that. You don't normally hear one of these in elementary band. Go ahead. Yeah, that was fun. We had a rain stick, Joe. We actually had a gourd being played. Uh, we tried to use as many different um, uh, unique sounding instruments as possible with that. Um, 
The next piece we're going to play is called Ghost Ship. Uh, Ghost Ship uh, was written um, in, in, uh, to represent the disappearance of the Mary Celeste in 1872. Uh, it set sail from New York City. Uh, it was heading to Genoa, Italy. It never reached its destination. On December 4th of the same year, 600 miles west of Gibraltar, it was found floating aimlessly. Um, after boarding the ship, rescuers discovered, to their shock and amazement, that everyone on board had vanished. Um, so this ghost ship, uh, this legend floating out in the ocean, uh, was the inspiration for this piece. Uh, as I've read this to the kids many times, they describe the piece as piratey. So it sounds very piratey. I know that's not a word, but um, that is uh, the inspiration for Ghost Ship. suspended symbol that sounded uh, like waves crashing against a ship. Uh, so as the suspended symbol kept coming in, it was the ocean. I explained to the students how uh, a lot of these uh, sounds were supposed to be representative of, of certain parts of a ship. We actually have a ship's bell that was being played back there. Um, it wasn't really a ship's bell, it was a brake rotor being hit with a hammer, but it sounds just like a ship's bell. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> and in the middle, as we had this beautiful clarinet melody, I'm sure a couple of you kind of heard that disturbing percussion that kind of jumped in. And then it was this clarinet melody, and then all of a sudden the percussion came in, and they were actually in a different meter. It was supposed to be disturbing. As we kept playing that during band, they said, it sounds wrong. It sounds wrong. And I said, so does a ship full of ghosts. Okay, and that's the point. Okay, they're supposed, to be, they're supposed to be interrupted. Their voyage was interrupted. So as you heard that, this interruption kind of kept coming in, taking over the melody. Um, so uh, believe it or not, working a piece that had two different meters in it uh, at times was, was, was a challenge for elementary students. They did a very nice job with that. So that's Ghost Ship. 
The last piece we're going to play um, is a piece called Freedom's March. Uh, my father was a band director for 34 years, a high school band director, and one of his beliefs was uh, you always program a march. Uh, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, what generation you grew up in, uh, it's very difficult to sit still during a march. Um, so, uh, middle school, we've performed marches before. Uh, this is Freedom's March. Uh, so we hope you enjoy the final part of the Upper Elementary Advanced Bands portion of our concert this evening. Thank you. Those of you savvy listeners out there, if you noticed, we had three pieces. The first one was in 4 4 time, the second one was in 3 4 time, and the last one was in 2 4 time. That was by design. We wanted to make sure that uh, they are able to be flexible in their play. We also had a couple songs with some key changes. So, as far as the elementary band is concerned, they played three different time signatures and four different key signatures. Um, so, over three pieces. So, uh, very proud of them. Uh, very proud of their hard work this year. Um, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Uh, for bringing them at 8 a.m. on Tuesdays and for the beginners on Thursdays. I know that is a time commitment, um, and I greatly appreciate it and, this, and your support of their music education. Uh, we had some parents helped out tonight in the, in the rooms um, just supervising. Um, any, anything like that, we had people who baked things for, uh, for what the music parents are doing out in the lobby. All of that, all of that is not possible without you. So I would like to say thank you for supporting the wonderful efforts uh, that these students put forward tonight. So thank you. Um, another round of applause for both of our guys. Please give us a round of applause. With that being said, we're going to close the curtain. We're going to take a few minute intermission, and we're going to start the middle school portion of our program. So thank you very much, and have a great evening.